For more than a century, the VFW has placed great emphasis on educating our nation's youth on Americanism, civic responsibility, and patriotism. Enacted in 1999, the Smart Maher VFW National Citizenship Education Teacher Award Contest is a way to recognize teachers who strive to implement these core values into the daily classroom curriculum. This year's recipients are exceptionally devoted to Americans who have undoubtedly exceeded their responsibilities as citizens of the United States through the art of teaching. These three honorees were selected from across the nation for their innovative teaching methods and dedication to citizenship education. They have used unique teaching styles and eye-opening class projects to passionately promote America's history and its traditions. The teachers here today have succeeded by encouraging their students to become better citizens by spreading knowledge of our nation's history, its institutions, and becoming involved in their own communities. Each recipient will receive the $1,000 Smart Maher VFW National Citizenship Education Teacher Award for personal development, and their schools, likewise, will receive a $1,000 award. I would like to take this moment to personally thank these three teachers and all of the teachers of America. They mold the leaders of tomorrow, and we are forever indebted to them for their service to our children and this country. Thank you, teachers, and congratulations on the job well done. I'm pleased to introduce to you the National Citizenship Education Teacher of the Year representing grades kindergarten through five, Ms. Ann Parker Kamara of Harrisonburg, Virginia. In three short years that Ms. Kamara has been teaching fifth grade at Autobahn Elementary School in Dayton, Virginia, she has demonstrated a true passion for teaching her students the importance of patriotism, flag etiquette, and love of country. A few of her many projects have included visits from active duty service members and VFW members. As veterans shared their experiences from World War II through present day, Ms. Kamara inspired her students to do more. Her guidance led to students selling handmade patriotic wind socks and bracelets and using the proceeds to support wounded veterans. Students joined with members of VFW Post and Ladies Auxiliaries to assemble and mail care packages. And to ensure our fallen heroes were not forgotten, Ms. Kamara encouraged her students to hand make wreaths to place on veterans' graves in honor of Memorial Day. Ms. Kamara has successfully created an atmosphere where her students, the entire school, and surrounding community are encouraged and energized to learn about our country and all those who have sacrificed to defend our freedom. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ann Parker Kamara, sponsored by VFW Post 8644 and its Ladies Auxiliary in Bridgewater, Virginia. And the plaque reads, presented to Ann Kamara, Audubon Elementary School Teacher of the Year, grade level K through five, 2014, 2015. kind of covered what I was going to talk about, but I'll say something anyways. Um, 
I would like to start by saying I am a third year teacher from Audubon Elementary, which is a super small country school back in the sticks of Dayton, Virginia. We have about 215 students there, so we're really proud of our small project. Next, I would like to thank the VFW for this award. I feel so blessed and honored to be recognized, especially Mr. and Mrs. Weekly and Post 8644, because without you, this project would not have been as successful. I also would like to thank those currently serving and those who have served, because as Winston Churchill once said, we sleep soundly at night because rough men stand ready to visit violence on those who would harm us. So thank you for your courage and bravery. Our project started with wanting to teach the students the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. We did this by pairing my fifth grade students with their first grade book buddies and created the Patriots Project. I thought it was important to reach all different types of soldiers, including those serving, deceased, and wounded. We had all the students create a patriotic windsock which we raised $600 and all the proceeds went to wounded veterans. So we are really excited about that. Next, we did a care package drive to send up active soldiers. Now last year we sent 25 care packages and this year we are really excited that we sent 50 overseas to current soldiers serving local overseas. Finally, we wanted to do something for the soldiers that were deceased. So we created a patriotic clothespin wreath by spray painting clothespins red, white, and blue. We made one for each student, so about 45, and we took them to a local cemetery for Memorial Day. We had each student lay one on the wreath of a fallen soldier's grave. I just wanted to say that I am humbled by your recognition because the positive responses from the soldiers, community, and children, veterans, have been rewarding enough. Um, I also want to thank my parents and sisters and grandparents for them being here. And I want to leave you with a quote that I have used before. It's my favorite of all time. Um, a Purple Heart Marine told me once. He said, you can thank your teachers for learning how to read and write, but you can thank your veterans for it being in English. So thank you all for that. Congratulations. Next, I'm pleased to introduce the National Citizenship Education Teacher of the Year, representing grades six through eight, Ms. Melinda Hamilton of Claremont, North Carolina. Ms. Hamilton's patriotism and appreciation for our country comes from her father's own military service during Vietnam. Determined to instill the same citizenship and love of country in her students, Ms. Hamilton has been instrumental in creating, implementing, in creating and implementing activities that provide students with the opportunity to develop citizenship and leadership qualities. Coordinating community service projects, hosting voter registration drives, educating students on the election process, and organizing trips to Washington, D.C., Gettysburg, and Philadelphia are only a few highlights on her impressive resume. While her classroom and teaching style encourages and promotes civic engagement on local and worldwide levels, Ms. Hamilton doesn't stop there. Each year, she recognizes veterans by organizing Veterans Day displays, which include a wall of photos from area veterans and American flags placed around campus, all in the effort to teach her students about America's wars and its heroes. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Melinda Hamilton, sponsored by VFW Post 5305 in Conover, North Carolina. And the plaque reads, presented to Melinda Hamilton, River Bend Middle School, Teacher of the Year, grade level 6 to 8, 2014-2015. Thank you. 
I want to begin with just uh, a little bit of school business. I have several characters in my classroom. And one of my seventh grade students wanted me to tell President Obama that Jason Chang says hello if I get the opportunity to meet him today. So if any of you have the opportunity to speak to President Obama, please tell him Jason Chang, seventh grade student, says hello. <laughs> This is such an incredible honor. I'm so humbled to be the recipient of this year's Smart Mayor VFW Citizenship Education Teacher for the Middle Grades. I'd like to congratulate Ann and Craig uh, for the winning at their respective grade levels. Congratulations on your achievements. It's an honor to be in your company today. Congratulations. Receiving this award is an amazing honor, but it's only possible due to the work and the support of a lot of other people. The students, teachers, parents, community members, and local churches <clears throat> have always been so instrumental to my success. Therefore, this award belongs to our entire school community. I sincerely thank each of them for their role in getting us here today, where I can proudly accept this award as a mark of our achievement, the entire Riverbend Middle School team. I'd like to take this moment to recognize a few people who made it possible for me to be here today. First, I would like to thank the National VFW for your continued support of teachers and public education. Thank you. I have the greatest respect for all veterans, the brave men and women who have answered the call to serve our country. You are the real heroes and sheroes. I would also like to acknowledge your family members. We often forget about the sacrifices made by the wives, the husbands, the children, and the extended family members who make tremendous sacrifices carrying on at home while our men and women of service are away answering the call of duty. So to all family members, thank you. Secondly, I would like to thank VFW Post 5305 in Newton, North Carolina. Over the past few months, the men and women at the VFW Hall have become a second family to me. Under the leadership of Larry Moon Teague, the members at Post 5305 conducted a beautiful award ceremony in front of our entire school and the passion, pride, and eloquence of Dr. Jerry Ventenner and the other VFW members left many of us in tears. I owe a very, very special thank you to Larry Teague for his friendship and support throughout this process. You have done an amazing job making this a lifetime memory that I will never forget. I hope I represent North Carolina Post 5305 and the North Carolina District 14 as honorably as you have represented us with your service to this country. So thank you to North Carolina. And I'll also say thank you to West Virginia. Where is West Virginia? I was born and raised in West Virginia, and my parents and my family still live there today. So thank you to West Virginia. I'd also like to thank my Riverbend Middle School family. Thanks to all my colleagues and the seventh grade team members for your support and your friendship. Needless to say, I wouldn't be here without the support of all of you. I need to thank Ms. Stacy Bumgarner. Ms. Bumgarner is uh, one of my best friends, and she went behind my back 
to write the nomination letter to get this ball rolling, and I was a little mad at her in the beginning for not telling me, but after seeing what an amazing experience this has been, I'm so honored and I'm not mad at her anymore. She is forgiven. <clears throat> I'd like to thank my family. I have my mother and father and one of my two sisters here with me today. <clears throat> my two wonderful sisters, Tammy and Rose, I love both of you very much. You're the best sisters ever, and I'm thankful for the close relationship we have. Not all sisters are as lucky as we are. <clears throat> to my mom and dad, who I'm proud to say just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary in May. <clears throat> Linda, you've always been there to support all three of us with everything we've ever attempted, and you're the rock that holds our family together. I love you very much. We don't say that often enough. And finally, to my dad, Clinton. Growing up in the coal fields of southern West Virginia, we always knew our dad served in Vietnam, but it was something we never discussed as a family. We still have not had a conversation about his experience in Vietnam. Today, support and respect for returning soldiers is widespread as it should be. However, that wasn't the case for the Vietnam era veterans. They arrived home to a country in political turmoil and they never received the thanks and the respect that they deserved. My dad's service and the service of other Vietnam veterans should have been a badge of honor, not a burden to bear. And I'm very proud of Senator Richard Burr from the state of North Carolina, who in 2011 uh, presented a resolution to Congress to celebrate March 30th as National Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. We need to do a better job getting that news out in public. <clears throat> So to my dad, without knowing any of the details of your service in Vietnam, our entire family, I get very emotional. Our family <laughs> knows you served honorably and bravely in Vietnam, and you are our hero. You are my inspiration and the reason I'm so dedicated to honoring all veterans in the United States. <clears throat> We're not very mushy in our family, so, and I apologize, but I love my family very much. <clears throat> I'd like to say thanks to the entire VFW organization and to the city of Pittsburgh for your awesome hospitality. Next summer, my home state of North Carolina, under the leadership of State Commander Jesse Bellflowers and Senior Vice Commander Doug Blevins, Look forward to hosting you with a little Southern hospitality for the 117th BFW National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. In closing, I would like to say that serving in the military is a sacrifice for those who serve abroad and for those who serve at home. Our country owes every veteran a great deal of gratitude and it is the duty of all American citizens to honor and respect those who answer the call to keep us all safe. 
Thank you so much to the National VFW. This is the greatest moment and honor of my life, and I sincerely thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I promise I wouldn't cry. That's no? all right. Thank you. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to the National Citizenship Education Teacher of the Year representing grades 9 through 12, Mr. Craig Blackman from Chesapeake, Virginia. For almost 30 years, Mr. Blackman has used his classroom to bring history to life. His peers and students have praised him for his ability to teach history in entertaining and memorable ways. From hiring reenactors to perform war era skits to delivering the Gettysburg Address dressed as Abraham Lincoln, Mr. Blackman has gone to great lengths to ensure students develop a greater respect for veterans and a better understanding of our nation's history. Challenging his students to dig deeper into history is one of his greatest strengths. After spending countless hours of research scouring obituaries, marriage and census records, as well as reaching out to VFW posts, he selected the names of 25 local soldiers killed during the Vietnam War. His innovative research project required students to discover and tell the soldiers' stories by authoring their biographies. The fallen soldiers and Marines, who had long been forgotten by their hometown, were honored in a Memorial Day service that will stay with his students and community for years. As a published author, Virginia's Social Studies Teacher of the Year, and a recipient of countless awards, it isn't hard to see that Mr. Blackman is a great example of the difference one teacher can make in the lives of America's future leaders. Please help me in welcoming Mr. Craig Blackman sponsored by VFW Post 2894 in Chesapeake, Virginia. And this plaque raised presented to Craig Brackman, Indian River High School Teacher of the Year, grade level 9 through 12, 2014-2015. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I am a Penn Stater. I want you to know that. I know I'm in Pitt territory. Do we have any Penn State fans out there? But it has uh, been an amazing year, and I thank you so much for this uh, great honor. I want to thank many people. I want to start with my Heavenly Father, if you would let me do that. I would like to thank him for his goodness and this great gift, for he's the giver of all good things who taught me the importance of honoring our veterans. I thank you for that. I also want to thank my mother, who is here from New Jersey, who studied to be a U.S. cadet nurse uh, at Syracuse University. Mom, would you please stand? Would you please help me to honor that great generation? Don't sit down yet, Mom. Get back up there. You got to stand back up, Mom. I, I wanted to personally thank you for teaching me to love my country and to always remember those who suffered and served our country. Thank you. My father also served in the U.S. Army and the Alash, I'm sorry, the Aleutian Radio Corps. So I wanted to honor his memory also today. Let me also thank my wife who is here. If you'd please stand up, Joette. Today is our 25th anniversary. <laughs> you 
And she has put up with me for 25 years. I deserve an award right there. And I have two lovely daughters who are right here. If they would please stand so I could embarrass them. One last time, Brooke and Sydney. Thank you for being the, the joys of my life. Let me also give a shout out to our principal, Nicole Dunbar in Chesapeake, as well as retired principal James Fry, who has always supported me uh, in my projects honoring veterans. I also wanted to uh, give a shout out to Alan Krasnoff, who's the mayor of Chesapeake, who always encouraged me and all my visions to help out veterans. He's a tremendous man, a tremendous politician, who I dearly love. Thank you, VFW, for all that you do, for your great treatment. You treat us so well uh, at every single level. Let me especially thank Chris Mulholland, Post Commander uh, at 2894 in Virginia, who just embodies the excellence of your organization. He has been just super, a tremendous researcher, professional, uh, and a person who serves continually. He's just been an amazing person who has really fought for me in so many ways. Let me just take a moment and summarize my project uh, in 2014. The lesson for this project was to honor the warrior. To honor the warrior. Because as we heard before in Vietnam, we didn't separate the war from the warrior. So this was meant to help my students make an organic connection to make history come to life and to honor that warrior, not just in a textbook, but to understand a real-life situation with families and what they have to deal with. So they wrote biographies of the 25 men from our community, and it was my job to find the surviving family members, the Gold Star Mothers, and other individuals who lost a loved one some 45 years ago. No matter what it took, no matter how long it took, to find every single one, if possible. And I can tell you, this will be my 30th year coming up. There's nothing that has been more meaningful as a teacher than to see your students come together with those individuals in a reception and have them honor them and give them that essay uh, to honor their loved one. Let me just tell you a short story that might help you understand the power of this project. In 1970, there was an airborne ranger named Ronnie Wayne Jones. In his first mission, he was killed in Vietnam. And his mother never really understood the full story of what happened to Ronnie. And so I kept calling and I called. I was able to contact Ronnie's CO and his war buddies and talk to them layer upon layer. And the kids wrote his story. And that Gold Star mother came to our reception. And because of that, had the strength to call those war buddies. And after 45 years, to have final closure and know the full story of her very heroic son. And there's also the story of Mrs. Elliott, who's told me when I contacted her after about five months, she said, I've been waiting 45 years for someone to honor my only son for his service in Vietnam. And to have my students participate in that and meet with her and to bless her in that way was beyond description. So this power, this project was very powerful. Let me just say in closing that you are my heroes. And as long as I'm in the classroom, I will honor you and the principles that you fought for. God bless you and welcome home my Vietnam heroes. And God bless John McCain. Thank you.